Okay, last but not least, I'd like to go ahead and finish up the styles for the forums index here. And so that should be a pretty straightforward task. So we'll go ahead and implement it. So let's head over into the code and we'll just visit our forum index. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and actually paste in the markup here and then we can go ahead and discuss it. So as we've seen before in the other views, I'm gonna wrap the content here in a container body content. And as I've mentioned in the past, perhaps we should have this as part of our template. In any case, the first row here will be our section header. And so as, as we've seen also before, we'll have the section heading and then below it, the section description. Um, another thing to think about here is to start breaking out our views into partials and taking these sections that we reuse over and over again and just have them get dynamically generated. Um, but I'll leave that as an exercise for future front end refactoring. And so we have this sort of welcome message here talking about how posts are categorized into different forms by topic. And then we have a message like, please read the forum guidelines if you'd like to create those um, before creating a new post. And then we say, if the user is not authenticated, then, um, and in fact, we can shorten this just to user, um, then they must be a registered member to create a new post. And we can just create a link over to the register action on our account controller to do that. Okay, so that's the top row. And then we have the sort of um, co main content row here with a table. And then here's our for each forum in the model.forum list. And then, and then we just have rows with data cells in them with these different divs to kind of contain um, some standard stuff here. Um, and in fact, let's go ahead and get rid of this background size 100% because that is now in our CSS. And you can see that I'm adding some new properties here. Um, so number of posts, number of users, and recent posts to this table. And so let's go ahead and add those to our view model and have our controller pass those values down to our view. So I'm just gonna stop the server and then we'll go into our forum models. And so our forum listing model will now have some new properties on it. So I can specify like a public int number of posts. And then a number of users. and then this bool for has recent post. And so if we head back down to the form index now, we should see that these properties can now be evaluated. And so let's assign them in the controller. So we'll head over into the controllers and the forum controller. And then I'll scroll down here to the index. And here where we're using the form service to select our forums into this forum listing model. Let's go ahead and set some more properties. So number of posts can be forum.posts.count. And what I'm gonna do here is simply um, check to see if post is null. And if it is, then we will say zero here um, if it's not, then we'll get to call count and actually put a count out to uh, the page. Um, but it is possible for a new forum to simply not have any posts. And so if post is for some reason null, then we don't want to call count or anything else on it. And then number of users, what I'm going to do is use forum service here to actually get active users. And so this will be a new method, um, which we'll simply pass the forum ID, and then we can call count on. Then we can set the image URL to the forum image URL, and has recent post. We'll go ahead and use the forum service to write a method that's going to determine whether or not we consider the forum to have a recent post. Then what I'd like to do is in our forum list, when we return it, let's go ahead and order this as well. So we can order this by like the forum name, if we like. 
So let's go ahead and write our get active users and has recent post methods on our iForum interface. So we'll control period here to generate the method. And I'll control period here to generate this method as well. And then if we head up into iForum, we should see these new methods here, except that get active users will be a collection. So an iEnumerable of application user. Uh, and I see that we had started something where we said get all active users. Um, let's go ahead and remove that from this interface because I don't think it belongs here. Um, and we'll, yeah, we'll specifically be talking about the active users for a particular forum ID. So then we'll head into our forum service. And we'll go ahead and make sure that we implement the interface. And so we'll fill out our get active users method first. So we'll come in here. And what we're going to do is basically combine the distinct set of users from all of the posts and replies within this forum. So we can save our posts is equal to, we can say get by ID, ID. So this gets us this forum. And we can grab the post from that forum. And we can select the post user from each of those posts. Um, so in fact, I want to kind of break this up a little bit. So then we can save our post users is equal to posts and we'll select them. And then we'll say reply users is equal to post. Uh, and here, sorry, we actually need to select many to flatten this. So now we have the replies, and from the replies, we can select the reply user. And so in both cases here, we have a collection of application users, um, in one case coming from the posts, and the other coming from the replies from those posts. And so now what I'm gonna say is users is equal to post users dot union reply users dot distinct and in fact we can just return that value and what I'll do here is I'll say if posts is not equal to null or it's the case that there aren't any posts then we'll go ahead and return the union of all the users on the posts and the replies. Otherwise, let's just return an empty list of application user, which we could just call dot count on if it's empty and it'll be zero. So that should take care of our get active users method. And then if we scroll down, we have another new method. Well, we can get rid of this, which is the old get all active users method. And we have this new Boolean has recent post. And so what I'm going to do is just allow us to define like a constant that we want to set in terms of what we would consider recent. So let's say hours ago is equal to like 12. And then we have some window, which can be like datetime.now.addHours. And then we can do minus hours ago. So this gets us a datetime some number of hours ago into the past. And then we can return get by ID the forum ID dot post dot any and we can check to see that the post created on was created greater than or equal to our window. Or it doesn't really matter, we could just do greater than our window. Okay, so that's just one way to determine whether or not, you know, a post is recent. Of course, this is subjective. You, you may decide to have some other logic to determine what a recent post is for your application. Okay, so let's go ahead and start the application and take a look. So if we click on forums, so now we're getting a slightly nicer looking index here. We can also see that we're getting a number of posts and a number of users out to 
on the page here and we have this <laughs> rather nondescript hot tag here under Haskell which we just posted a, um, a new post to. So let's give that some styling to kind of make it um, stick out a little bit. If we inspect this element we can see that we've given this div the class has recent post. So I'm just going to head over into our CSS now and we can go ahead and create that. So let's give it some padding of like two pixels and a background color of like, like a reddish color and in fact um, you can use Visual Studio to select a color here. So we'll make it kind of like this reddish orange maybe. And we'll set the font color to white. And so if we shift and refresh here, yeah, so we can see that that's looking a little bit better. The next thing we can do is actually like align the text so that it's centered. and maybe just apply a tiny bit of border radius and we'll set an explicit width of 30 picks okay so we'll go ahead and refresh the page here and so now we get a little hot tag for forums that have recent posts so for instance if we were to add a post to our C sharp forum All right, so we'll submit the post and we'll head back to our forums and now we can see the hot label is posted on C Sharp as well. So just like a nice extra little feature that we have. Okay, so that just about wraps up the features for our application. Um, if you have followed from the beginning, then congratulations because you've made it quite a long way in really a relatively short period of time considering the fact that we are approaching a reasonably feature complete forum application. Now there are a few more things I'd like to do. I'd like to go ahead and authorize routes on several of the routes that we have so that authenticated users and users who are admins can only hit the, only hit the uh, controller actions that we'd like to authorize them for. And then we will get into looking at how to start writing some tests to try to cover some of the code in this application. And we won't get too much into detail in the test. In other words, we won't, won't write tests for everything and get complete code coverage by any means. But I'd like to show you so that you could actually carry that much further than we will here in this series. But I would like to go through and show you how to start writing tests, particularly for some of the methods in our service layer. So with that, let's go ahead and add authorization to those routes and then we'll get started testing. So let's go ahead and make a commit as well here, which is long overdue. 